Ah, the European Championship. Explosions. Here we're gonna summon Mario. Oh wow, we have an incident in the hall here. Fancy big cards, dogwood shenanigans in time. Let's talk about it. Now, if you still need Yu-Gi-Oh cards, go to 50cards.shop and use the code SOLEM for a discount. Link will be in the description. So I just got back from the European Championships and a lot happened. I have a lot to talk about. And I think the one thing most people agree on is that the format is ass and that we need a major ban list. So let's just unpack everything. So first, I wanna start with some positivity. I have to say, organization-wise, it was very very clean except for that explosion but I mean that's not really in the hands of Konami so more on that later and I really liked how much the stream was also stepped up so huge shout out of course to Farfa, Lampy, all the other casters and of course all the people behind the scenes doing that production work. A lot of people were complaining last week about the American Nat stream not because of casters of course but because of just the stream layout being weird and maybe between rounds you had so much time of waiting and just audience footage. Whereas here in Europe, I feel like they really stepped it up. You know, you had these post-game playthrough moments where people, you know, talked about what was going through their head. The interviews were nice like that. You also had footage from the playoffs. So you always had something to watch, even though after a while you were like, oh, I've already seen this one, but that's fine, you know. And then also, and this is actually a really interesting one, they stepped up the set, you know, the, the place where you have the casters talking to players. This is actually something that I brought up a few months ago when I had gone to a Pokemon event and I said our sets look like ass and, and they did for a long time it was just like this stupid banner with some logos on it which is fine but it could be so much better you know Pokemon had like these nice sets and now Konami, I, I literally also said it when I was in the venue. I was like, hey, look, they actually stepped that up. They had like this really pretty, for now, let's say it's a PNG. It's essentially just a fake set that they printed onto something and they put that behind the casters. But even though it's fake, it still looked really nice. You know, you had a really nice backdrop. It was really Yu-Gi-Oh themed. They had some merchandise in there, some merchandise that doesn't even exist, but it looked on brand. It looked very fancy. Overall, just a major step up from some random logos on the background. So I really enjoyed that. Just every Thing looked a whole lot cleaner. It really felt like we used to have a stream that's a 6 out of 10 and they pushed that to an 8. Can it still become a 9 or a 10? Sure, but this is really positive and I do want to point that out wherever possible. Now the elephant in the room of course is the explosion at some point. Here we're gonna summon Matt. So basically, I was really lucky in the sense that I had just walked out with this oversized card like 20 minutes before it happened and then I'm just in the hotel like whoo this was a heavy day and suddenly I see all the footage happening. I did have friends who were there at the time and so what went down is basically a, a fuse exploded you know inside a speaker or something like that. You had this blast of you know fire with sparks coming from that area. At first judges were like oh there's no problem there's no problem which is normal by the way you're supposed to not create panic in these types of situations because very often a situation actually isn't very dangerous but then people's panic turns it dangerous so at first they were like it's fine you know just chillax but then more and more smoke started entering the room and so then they were like oh maybe this is not so fine and then they started evacuating at least that's what i was told by my friends who were literally there i, I was in the hotel chilling at that point 20 minute difference and i would have been there as well so then the room was filled with like this burny chemically smell and they also had to stop the stream you know there's actual footage of a feature match I think it was top 8 or something like that being played out and you hear the bang <laughs> and then the stream goes dark because, well, everyone had to be evacuated. That's literally hundreds, if not over a thousand people still at that point having to go out of the venue. If you were playing, you know, in, in Top Cut, too fucking bad. Everyone leaves. So yeah, that was a mess, but of course that is not up to Konami, you know. They just rent a venue and then something in that venue goes wrong that's not up to them. So that's just a bit of a sad coincidence. Now, beyond that little challenge, everything overall was pretty smooth. My main event overall went pretty shit. I played Snake Eye in the main because I felt it was way better than you bell sadly and then i lost uh, one mirror i lost once against runic stun going second and then i lost once against you bell itself huh. the format overall feels like the best deck fiendsmith snake eye is the best by far i would say it's tier zero right now the top cut representations is like 49 percent of top cut is fiendsmith snake eye but it's whenever you're playing the deck it's just so obvious how much stronger it is than everything else it goes first it puts up that ftk board and everyone is basically 
basically forced to run like 20 hand traps to just try and stop that FTK board from happening. So if you lose the die roll, you feel awful because you have to really start sacking to make things somewhat even. You need to open like combinations of Bistials and Nibirus and some of the lines play through that like it's butter even. It's really fucking wild. Imperm Nib, of course, is the classic and there's some lines even that play through that pretty cleanly. You know, sometimes you're still gonna end on like the bunny with Azerun after that. It's really silly. And then Yubel is kind of weaker than that, but it's still a similar story. It still plays really well true hand traps and puts up really strong boards, you know, basically pseudo FTKs. And then when that board is there, you basically lose on the spot. That is the format right now. And so people, of course, don't want to lose to those decks, but maybe they can't afford them or they don't find them fun. They are very similar decks in the end. You know, Yubel is just shitty snake eye. And so what's your solution? I've already spoken about this in another video. It's just cheesing. Your only out is cheesing, so you might as well cheese. What do I mean by cheesing? You're playing a shifter deck. You're playing Ten Pi. You're playing Ritual Beast with Protoss Lock. You're playing Gimmick Puppet FTK. You're playing Runic Stun. You're playing Branded. You're trying to Gimmick Puppet Lock them. Basically, every deck is shit in comparison, so your only out is not actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And so that makes the format right now a total shit show. Now, I've been saying this from before, but I don't want to make this video like a negative whining about that because I've already whined about that and everyone has whined about that. I don't think any single person right now is like, oh yeah, this format's really cool. The weird thing is when you play this format, the worst part isn't actually Snake Eye. <laughs> when I play Snake Eye Fiendsmith, yeah, I can sometimes feel like, oh wow, this game was sacky because it was just like a hand trap versus starter war where you had to just pray to open it. But there's still quite some skillful interaction in that mirror. Really, the more infuriating part is all the cheese decks around that mirror making the whole format hell. If Gimmick Puppet FTKs you, it doesn't matter how good you are. You just got fucked. If Runic Stun opens their Amano Iwado and then just nukes your board and decks you out, it doesn't matter how good you are, you just got fucked. If Tenpai just opens their Shifter, it doesn't matter how good you are when your hand is full of Dia Bell Stars and Fiendsmith or you Bell Cards or any other deck really, you just got fucked. And so while the tier 0 part of this format is awful, of course it's not a great feeling, it's not the worst part to me, really. It's all the cheese bullshit around it that makes it so aggravating. So overall, you need a massive ban list. I think a lot of people agree on this. Not everyone will agree on what needs to be hit exactly, but we do need one, so everyone's looking forward to August. Now then, of course, I grinded the side events and tried to win this baby. As you know, I'm a huge Ubel fan, as you can see from right here, and of course now right here. Super stoked on that thing. So on Friday, I played Snake Eye Fiendsmith, and on Sunday, I played Ubel Fiendsmith. Ubel is so fun, oh my god. I, I cannot wait for like a ban list that nukes so much shit. And you can maybe even give a little tap to Yubel. I, I don't give a fuck. I just want a format where when I play Yubel, I don't feel like I'm throwing. The deck is solid, but it's, it just feels so bad when you're playing something that is just worse Snake Eye. Now, one more issue that I want to talk about with this format, where the best decks are trying to build these semi-FTK boards, is that there's a little thing that happens when there's semi-FTK boards. And that is that people try to play into to them. So let's say, you know, you went first and you built this semi-FTK board, whether it's from Yubel, whether it's from Ritual Beast, whether it's from Snake Eye Fiendsmith, I, I don't care. You made a semi-FTK, you know, you, you played with yourself for 10 minutes and it's really fucking strong. Now your opponent stares at that and goes, hmm, I'll try to play into it. And they start playing and they start thinking and they play and they play and it's obviously never gonna work. You can count the cards in their hand and your interactions and go, hmm, my interaction interactions are double your cards in your hand. Why are you trying? But they will. They will try. They keep trying. Mm, mm, uh, maybe this one card will trade with five interactions. Just, just maybe. Just maybe. And so they try and try and try. And before you know it, your game one took 35 minutes. And so then you won game one. Cool. So game two, you go second. You look at your hand. It's all engine. You're like, well, I'll do the smart thing. I'll scoop quickly so we can play out our game three. And so what do you do? You, you start your game three. There's only seven minutes on the clock anymore. You go normal summon snake eye ash effect poplar effect and they go <laughs> dogwood? Of course! Of course! Because you just had 35 minute game once where your opponent tried to play into a board that they could never break but they tried anyway and now you just got FTK'd by essentially the time version of Maxi. And if you looked at various lists everyone had predicted that this format would play out like that. If you had watched the American WCQ the streams I think over half the games were decided in time so you could figure out hey I 
think this is going to be pretty important. You know, Lacrimosa just burning in time and that being the main engine also means like, hey, you're going to get randomly cheesed by this bullshit. And so yeah, all the topping lists have this dogwood bullshit, a bunch of the top cut matches, a bunch of the Swiss matches and so forth. It's just dogwood upon dogwood upon dogwood. Now, some people have then gone, oh, so dogwood is a problem. I mean, no, the, the real problem is the time rules, very obviously. I've also spoken about that many times before. Fuck the time rules so badly. But with that being said, if you're gonna keep these time rules, yeah, fuck dogwood as well. And I like that card. The, the little dog is very cute. It's a, uh, it's a cool little card. But as long as we have awful time rules, having this like random weird version of Max C that auto wins you the game game three, when theoretically winning game one should give you the edge game three, but suddenly one in three games, it means just auto losing game three. That is awful gameplay experience. So that is one more thing that should probably be addressed and cannot be addressed in a ban list. I don't think the August ban list will go, oh, and also we fixed the time rules somehow. And also we ban Dogwood. Not that I'm saying you should ban Dogwood, you know, just fixing time rules would already be a thing, but how are you going to fix it without making tournaments go very long? Personally, I don't care that tournaments go long. I am down to play till 2 a.m. if it means you don't get cheesed in time. And if you can't keep up the stamina till 2 a.m., too bad. It just means the better players are going to win because they have to think less during the rounds because they've already practiced more. I'm all for that. Is it great for your health? No, but if you look at the Master Duel qualifiers, clearly that is not really something they have in mind right now anyway. I don't know the solution to time. I don't know the exact solution for the format, but that has just been my thoughts. That being said, I did have a lot of fun, you know, just hanging with friends, grinding sides, getting my baby in a big ass size. That has all been really cool. And again, the production has really been stepped up. So again, a big shout out to Farfa, Lampy, everyone on the production cast. I had a blast at Euros. This was my favorite Euros. Not my favorite format, but definitely my favorite Euros. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments down below. Did you go to American Nats or Euros or anything like that? Maybe Australia, South America. Let me know. If you still need cards, go to 50cards.shop. Use a code Solemn and I will see you soon. Ciao.